Hey there, everybody. I, I know it's probably been a while since I posted a video last, and, you know, for those of you that are expecting more Shadow Hearts, I'm sorry to let you down, but that just wasn't working out. So instead, I've, you know, just wanted to post a, a quick little short video for something that could possibly be fun, though it, it's something I still have to finagle around with to get working properly. <laughs> But yeah, I, I've always been a bit of a proponent for FMV games, especially ones that have some level of quality, and for the most part those were kind of negated to Japan, so there's a bit of a language barrier, which is definitely the case for this game. Though, you can kind of pick up on things here and there, such as the fact that yes, there is a, a section of Japan in the distant future of 2003 that's been suffering a bit of radical terrorist activity and such. They've now sectioned off the area with uh, Gestapo S police officers and super high tech gates and drones everywhere. Obviously a, a bit of a, a dystopian, big brother type future, but you know, maybe one that is necessary in the case of, you know, so many danger, dangerous terrorists. Obviously, though, that won't be the extent of what we're going to have to deal with here. It's going to be a whole mess of intrigue and you know, mystery and who's who and twists and plots and turns and... Could very well be an interesting title. I was a bit surprised. I I only stumbled across this game because I was looking at a, another Japan-only release, and I, I saw this and I was like, "Hey, why, why have I never heard of this game before?" I guess it could be due to its very generic title of "Alive." Not 100% sure what it has to do with the actual game yet, but I guess we will be finding it out. Now, they do give you a few options here on the main menu. You can kind of get a feel for, you know, what the game has to offer with the manual, but I already posted a video of that. I'm going to try to do a few explanations as we go along, but... Yeah, for right now, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Now, while that intro did kind of bring up the whole basic plot of there's terrorists and, you know, this area of Japan's on lockdown, the real story is going to, at first, focus on, uh, on our female protagonist here. In case we need to know who her, who she is, we are given access to her PDA and her nice little information card here. Yeah, we're going to be playing as Atsuko Kawada. And as you might assume, in the distant year 2003, where it looks like she's only three years old, I guess, uh, all, all people are now gently wrapped in silky cloth whenever they have their identification pictures taken. And if you notice on her ID there, it does say secret data, which means we can plunge a little bit deeper and see that there's a lot of Japanese text, which is probably not going to be super helpful to us, but uh, there is some mention of the police center. And also, you'll see JBS. JBS, I believe, is supposed to be the Japanese broadcasting system, which is kind of their um, omniscient television company. I guess instead of like BBC One or Two, they just have the, the JBS controlling all media. But yeah, while there, while there is a bit of a language barrier, most of the games so far that I've been able to play have been pretty, uh, let's say, easy to pick up on exactly what's going on. For now, though, let's uh, let's go ahead and get back to the game. find another member of the JBS so stuck on a scale model train being blown to fuck and where we see the omniscient uh, media corporation JBS somehow immediately on the scene and reporting on the exploding train could it be another act of terrorism well 
news is that Atsuko does seem to have some connection with one of the people on the train, that JVS individual. And even though that explosion was pretty severe, he seems to be mostly alright. And while a lot of the dialogue is delivered in cutscenes, uh, sometimes they do give you these, uh, these text-based interactions, which... Yet again, we don't really need to worry about, even though they do give you multiple choices. We don't, we don't need to worry about that until maybe some nice person comes along and is like, Hey, here's the plot. And that, that might be nice. That might actually motivate me to do a full legitimate LP of this game. I can only assume, though, that they are directing Atsuko to where she needs to go to next. And while, while she does seem a little bit uh, uneasy around all these drones, there is going to be a much larger problem coming into Atsuko's life very shortly. And that's this goatee gentleman. He obviously is a very fierce customer, and we don't really want to deal with him, so... The good thing is that living in a police state does mean you are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty much given easy access to the police whenever. And all these nice little oversized SD cards, which give us constant access to the police if we need it. I mean, as long as you are a, a legitimate citizen of this area. The problem is, they were keeping an eye on Atsuko, but even with all the cameras and drones, they did not seem to capture that goatee gentleman at all, and they just do not seem to believe that she was actually being followed. And they probably don't like being, ha they don't like having their time wasted, so... I think they are probably gonna need some evidence. Which works out for Atsuko here, because she happens to have a necklace with a camera. I guess maybe she's a reporter and that makes sense, but yeah, it's not the most convenient way to, to capture images. Akiro. Still, Atsuko has better places to be, and hopefully her, her companion there, Akira, might be joining her shortly up in this hotel room. Seems they might be having some clandestine meeting. And that might be why uh, Atsuko here is feeling pretty ill at ease. Now, up to this point, we haven't really had to do any actual gameplay, and you might be kind of wondering, oh, is this just a, a movie they decided to slap onto a set of PS1 discs? And like most FMV games, the actual gameplay is a bit limited. In this case, it's more of a choose-your-own-adventure-style scenario. Kind of showed it off in the uh, the previous video where, you know, you kind of had multiple choices. And our first multiple choice is going to be coming up shortly. Because it seems that Atsuko came to this hotel room kind of expecting someone, and it seems like nobody's around. Only this strange present and some steam coming from the bathroom. And wouldn't you know it, something grisly has happened in there, it seems. But, yeah, we're given three options. Action, clever, and escape. Clev, like, one of the problems with the game is that it's not always very clear what your actions from those three selections will do. Clever makes sense because it's like, it's a fucking crime scene. Don't, you know, touch stuff, maybe try to get help, but... Yeah, her little DS is not able to connect to Akira to give her any assistance. And whenever you see that little icon... I know I didn't have much time 
to really show it, but yeah, whenever that little icon shows up, that means you can access your PDA. And this is where you do a lot of important stuff, such as saving. Saving is very crucial because one of the other things this game has is a lot, a lot of death traps. Like, you can make a lot of bad choices very quickly, and yeah, there's no checkpoints. It's only, you know, hard saving whenever you get the opportunity. But yeah, the reason it popped up there is because we were given, uh, or the JBS has a, a bit more uh, news for us, and that we can't read it. It does have some lovely pictures, which we can kind of put you know, two and two together and maybe figure out what's going on. Such as, you know, train blew up. That fucking sucked. But you'll also see that there, uh, there's a little bit of text there that's kind of, you know, highlighted and squared off in red. And that means that we can get some more information on a particular person of interest from that article. Uh, Haidetake Suguta? Suguta? Yeah, I guess that's butchering it. And he, uh, he's a fucking nerd, so who cares about him? But, since we did get the information, it's now saved elsewhere on our PDA, along with uh, the other information from this you know, text here. And that's all sectioned off in, in very lovely subcategories, which might be useful if we could read. And under access, we can call other places, though for the most part, as we kind of saw, we don't have the best uh, telephone connection here right now, so... For right now, we can, we're can. we just going to have to try to see if we can figure out you know, some other way to get out of this hotel room. Uh, let's be active. Let's see what that gets us. Quick scan of everything. Might be some way out in this adjacent room here. Seems initially empty, but uh, someone's under these silky covers. Uh, let's maybe check it out. Or not. That doesn't seem clever. Yeah, it's it's just kind of a guessing game as to as to what any of these options actually do sometimes. But hey, what's in the box? It's a gun! Uh-oh. Things are starting to seem more and more like a trap set up by someone. Let's get the fuck out of here. Problem is that since we are pretty much trapped in this hotel room, I guess we're, we're stuck with having to maybe duel this guy. It's just, I don't really trust Atsuko to, to be that adept with the gun. So, let's be clever, confuse him. Or, I, I guess clever means escape? Yeah, that works too. That's, that's always an option. But, I mean, at least we didn't have to get in a gunfight with him. Let's maybe try to be active. I mean, he could sneak up behind us or... Oh yeah, he's still in the other room. Yeah, let's, let's try to fucking shoot him. Yeah! Good job, Atsuko. Now, the game with all those options, I'd say most of the time those options will inevitably lead you, lead you to getting killed, which is gruesome, and I will be showing that off in a little bit. But for the most part, it, it, it does show that they filmed a lot of different scenes and a lot of different available actions you can do. It seems like they... 
the developer honestly put a lot of time and money into this, and it's pretty impressive. And probably the reason why this developer only ever made, I think, this one game. I mean, it, it's, it's got some pretty well-shot scenes for the most part. Yeah, well, well, we were able to wing our, our would-be assailant. Seems this hotel room is uh, in a pretty bad state. And what's worse... Yeah, the reason that person wasn't reacting under the covers is because they are very, very dead. We do manage to get a key card from them, which might help us escape the room. Since that the all-seeing JBSI has yet again managed to find a crime before it should be ever reported. And what's worse? Ah! Uh, we are caught on camera performing a murder! Yeah, that definitely is us and not any other number of Japanese women. So yeah, we are immediately caught up in being framed for murder. Which I guess we could have done whenever we fell asleep. Still, we are not really able to connect fully with Akira. Though he does want to know why we uh, we just committed our murder with someone we were probably supposed to meet up with. And clearly we have to tell him, uh, it totally wasn't us. I mean, we were just pretty much framed by a goateed man in sunglasses. And that doesn't make sense. Why would you wear sunglasses at night? Unless your future was so bright you had to wear shades. Needless to say, Akira does have a few ideas of what we could do. But, I mean, we could call the police center. Seems we can connect with them now. And there's also the police. And they, they... I don't think they're gonna be too open to the fact that, you know, well, we're not, you're not guilty even though we're filmed having just committed a murder. So yeah, we, we just kind of have to depend on ourselves. Yep, they already have a, a printed news story of us violently gunning down a nerd in a bedroom. Though I, I'm fairly certain that's also the, uh, the guy we got the ID of. He was... Yeah, this guy. Nerd! So yeah, we, I think we were supposed to meet up with him here, get some information, possibly regarding the terrorist, and instead he ended up dead, and now we're we're on the lam. But we do have that new key card. Maybe that'll allow us to get out of the room. Now we are given a few options here. Gun. Let's go with the folder. We do find another card. This world is just simply full of cards, though. Yep, still, still no help in getting that door open. But that would be assassin did drop a security card. Who can use her high tech DS to do a, well, a hacking mini game? And I, I know you all thoroughly enjoy hacking mini games, whether it be Deus Ex or those pipes from Bioshock. Uh, this one manages to be somehow more inexplicable and very, very Japanese. 
and yet still futuristic. We got origami cranes, we got lanterns, we got waving good luck cats, duramas. I think those are those little, you know, stubby, you know, faced little dolls. And it's got all this text here. Uh, I think the only way to really explain it is to do it, because it's strange. But yeah, what we need to do is escape the light bike doramas. If they hit us, they, they cause the timer to go down more. And all we need, inevitably need to do is collect all the, the origami cranes by bumping into the little housing shelters they're in. And it, it's, it's what I assume hacking in the future will be like. Now the I think these lampposts will freeze the 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 Durama for a little bit, and I think the cat statue will reveal things. It's I don't know I haven't got much use out of it, but, but needless to say, probably since this is just a a little introduction to this, this is not terribly difficult though. Controlling this with a D-pad is not the uh, the most precise thing in the world. It's actually very imprecise, especially since these cranes are pretty small. But yeah, as long as you don't constantly bump into the, the, the red dolls, you're going to have plenty of time. And we are given another news story here. Seems there there might be people being arrested. It might have some connection with the the terrorism, but it's a bit bit difficult to say. They don't really seem the most threatening threatening group of people, even though they could be from X City. But still, we'll store all that lovely information away for right now, and we'll just, I guess, try to keep going and see if we can't finally get out of this hotel and maybe meet up with Akira finally. Yeah, also for some reason she manages to change into a another very futuristic outfit. The Volkswagen Patrol is on the scene. And needless to say, these guys are very, very violent. This seems to be a, a nation that's kind of, uh, you know, guilty until proven guilty by guilt. And it's not really a, an open avenue for proving your innocence. And getting out of the hotel is a pretty dangerous affair all in all. There's a lot of twists and turns and uh, plenty of avenues to run into the many, many police waiting for you. And I, I have, uh, spoiler alert, I have managed to play my way through, you know, escaping, which is good, because it, it took me you know, a lot of trial and effort, because some, some spots are they get they cut it pretty close. In this case, we're stuck inside this elevator. I assume it's a service elevator, which means we could get out the back way. But we are stuck in here with one of the Gestapo security officers. And what's worse, the elevator does break down. So we are pretty much stuck between a rock and a hard place, with even more police waiting outside. And, oh man, what do we do? I feel like if we actually try to fight them or anything, we're just gonna get fucking pulverized. Well, we could be clever. That does allow us to notice a grate or an opening in the ceiling there. Now, if you do choose action here and you do try to fight your way out, 
you will get fucking creamed by all these police officers. They will just baton the fucking shit out of them. It's really, really grisly. And man, they are fucking into this shit. They, they really, it's, it's very violent. We got another new piece of news. I think this. No, we didn't. I just swore we got something new. Sometimes it just gives you uh, after after you've done enough. It get, it does give you the option to kind of save. And well, we don't need to worry about that for right now. It is good though that uh, Atsuko is pretty uh, pretty forthright. She's a she's a very action oriented protagonist. Even in, in these very stressful times. Yeah, let's take a left. It sounds right. But yeah, I, I really can't overstate the fact that uh, there's a lot of deaths in this. There's a lot of possibilities for deaths and... I don't know. It's, it's good. It's good to keep you on your toes. Because there, there are also some QTEs in the game. And this, this could be a bit worrisome. This security policeman is checking pretty thoroughly, but we we do narrowly avoid be being getting caught with this nice old maid. But, oh! Oh no, we almost got caught! Hey, that's a lot of tension. Like if this was a French horror movie, it'd be called Hot Tension. It seems though that we might actually be home free now. I mean, it could very well be that all this dirty laundry is going to be wheeled safely out of the building. Or the police could just be super thorough and, well, they might stumble across us. Needless to say, uh, I'm going to get out of here. I feel like there's not a whole lot of clever stuff you can do inside of a laundry basket. But you can do clever things in the hallway. Shoot to fucking kill, right? I don't know, maybe things are just really bad in this terrorist state. It's, it's just very surprising to me. Up to this point, I don't want to say things have been smooth sailing, but for Atsuko, it seems to be the end of the line here. It's like, seriously, just arrest me. Shoot me less. With your... Why does everybody have a desert eagle? Uh, let's be clever. That seems to work. Oh, it's a quick time. Uh, we gotta shoot. And I failed. Yeah. Yeah, the, the deaths in this game are really grisly and violent and very, very uh, mean to Atsuko. And what's worse is that if you actually let the decision meter just time out, it's immediately game over. Like, there, there's no questions asked. It doesn't even go into an animation or anything. It's just like, oh, you didn't make a decision. You failed. You suck. So, let's see if we can't do that QTE a little bit better. As far as I can tell, the QTEs don't really mix it up. So, 
So, I think as long as we make sure to press down, it should be a little bit better. And not fucking full of holes. Yeah, let's get the fuck out! Meanwhile, in a living room... Yeah, I think this was the woman that Akira was kind of camping out and taking a look at when he was inside the train. She might also be a woman that popped up in one of those uh, news stories we saw. Needless to say, she seems either concerned or interested in what's going on with Otsuko. And what's even more odd is that I think she's being followed. Yep. She's definitely being followed. For now, though, we are almost all the way out of the hotel. Just had to get by another small battalion of police officers. And also, we got more news. I think this is... Ah, there we are. Lovely. And I like all these uh, random phone numbers and stuff. We have all these little advertisements here to, to keep us abreast of all the capitalism in this futuristic Japan. You know, yeah, it looks like uh, the guy we were supposed to meet might have also been maybe hanging out with a prostitute? I mean, I assume that's why we have this Let's Pink advertisement, and also the picture of the woman is sultry? would be the best word for it. Sexy. It's definitely not uh, not as nerdy as, you know, Sudutaka. He's, he's a nerd. But yeah, I'm gonna keep all that on the, on the old back burner. Because we still have to make our way out of the parking garage and hopefully make our way finally to safety. Suko do? There's still so many police officers with their well-lit traffic cones. I will say though, sometimes the decisions do make a lot of sense, like if they give you action against all these heavily armored police officers, that usually doesn't go very well and they usually just kind of slap her and handcuff her it's game over. It seems that Volkswagen bugs are probably not the best thing to make a roadblock with, and yeah, we we met we managed to narrowly make our way out of the hotel of death. And that's I think this is probably a good place to stop. I don't know if you have more interest in this, I, I can probably you know manage to brute force my way further through it. I think there's a, there's a pretty interesting game un underneath all this you know, violence and confusion and intrigue and Volkswagen bugs. Really, I have no idea why they went with VW bugs for you know their Gestapo police state. So why is this woman being followed? Seems though that she knew she was being followed. Thanks a lot, homeless people. But we'll have to find that out next time. If there is next time, it's kind of up to you guys. See you then.